In February 2017, more than 130 experts from Emerging Markets Finance gathered for the largest ever workshop dedicated to advancing best practice solutions to reduce foreign currency risk. Foreign currency risk is one of the most significant barriers to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. By most estimates, more than 90% of debt financing to low-income countries is denominated in foreign exchange. Prevailing practices cause the most vulnerable in these countries to borrow in FX while the revenues are in local currency. This risk often leads to insolvencies, job losses and crises. Where do we see development finance in 10 years' time? Look, these are the, the three big components that come out from Addis Ababa Action Agenda. The first one is ODA. ODA is indispensable and irreplaceable, but a part of it can be used to leverage what is the second part. The second part is investments. Investments domestic and international. And in order to do right investments in the difficult situation, in the difficult countries, the development actors must push and must facilitate and edge the risks. The Addis Ababa Action Agenda, which was the global accord that member states agreed to in terms of how to achieve sustainable development and reach the global goals, calls for managing risk. And managing risk throughout the economy, managing risk in the private sector and in the public sector. Sustainable development goals are very ambitious and they will require trillions of dollars of financing. Uh, as we all know, um, uh, right now most of the uh, funding in the poorest countries uh, where we need to work on achieving the, the SDGs comes from uh, public sources. And to unlock the opportunities for the private sector, we would have to de-risk uh, some of those projects, uh, sectors and countries where private sector will uh, come in. I think what we've seen today in the conference is that uh, FX risk is a very uh, complex problem that encompasses not just financing, but also a whole uh, range of uh, structural and sectoral reforms that are uh, necessary to, to improve the availability of, um, of uh, local currency financing. The consequences can be extreme. It's not just financial. They have impacts on the real economy. The first is that many companies go bankrupt. And um, once a company is bankrupt, you can't unbankrupt it. So there are real impacts on the economy. There's impacts on unemployment. There's impacts on poverty, on inequality, and on general growth. And we see this, uh, just to mention one region for all that I work with uh, very closely, which is the Caucasus. They've seen 50, 60 percent depreciation, currency depreciation, over the last three to four years. Hence, any borrowing in hard currency really uh, falls hard on their, uh, on their shoulders. We realized over time that uh, hard currency finance can constitute a problem for the recipient countries. And uh, for the future, um, I think we need to acknowledge that this problem is there because uh, we don't want to fall into a trap uh, which famously Albert Einstein described, uh, said, uh, doing the same thing all over again and hoping for different results, that's a kind of madness. A lot of research over the last three months of the different blended finance instruments to reduce foreign exchange risk in developing countries. And we've really found two types of interventions financially and one for technical assistance. One, the types of interventions which are probably the best is what can we do to deepen, improve, broaden, domestic financial intermediation and local currency. There's some excellent examples out there, like the Credit Guarantee Investment Facility and Garantco. That's one class. The second class is like TCX, cross-border flows of uh, financing into emerging markets. Unfortunately, they're predominantly in, in, in de denominated in hard currency. We're looking to put that into local currency and entities like TCX and those types of interventions. What we should avoid is financing companies that earn local currency and finance them with foreign currency. And I think in time we should come uh, to a point where we agree all together that that is not allowed anymore. That will force us to find better solutions for the local currency uh, and avoid uh, putting that risk on companies in developing countries which cannot bear that risk. One thing we're setting up under the uh, external investment plan is um, this guarantee facility. We call it EFSD, um, European Fund for Sustainable Development, so, uh, thus the EFSD guarantee facility, which will be able to provide um, guarantee capacity to a whole range of innovative financial instruments. 
and FX uh, would be a very uh, good and, and uh, potentially very interesting application uh, of, the, of the guarantee. IFC has a long experience in offering local currency uh, financing in emerging markets. And so far we have provided $19 billion of financing, uh, mainly through commercial sources. Our priority and preference is always to uh, offer market-based solutions wherever possible. This year um, we just completed the IDA-18 replenishment. Um, that's a historic $75 billion replenishment. And one of the innovations as part of this replenishment is to create a private sector window. And within that private sector window, um, projects will be able to access uh, coverage uh, for local currency. So the ethical question is, why should you, as a foreign investor, offload risks to parties that can bear it the least? The answer is, well, actually, you shouldn't and you don't have to. By pooling it in an institution that has been set up for the single purposing of warehousing these risks, you can solve it. And you can give a local currency loan to your end client in Uganda, Mozambique or Myanmar without exposing them to that currency risk. OPIC, the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, has been working with MFX since its, its initial founding. And we are now at a stage where they're ready for um, an additional expansion. And the idea is to help them expand beyond the microfinance sector. The biggest barrier to increasing cross-border local currency financing right now is the interest rate differential between local currency lending and hard currency. Almost all of the private sector and most of the development finance institutions, financial institutions, are not prepared to take currency risk. Therefore, they either need to hedge themselves or fund themselves in the local currency. And when they do that relative to dollars, there's a large interest rate differential. And unfortunately, many of our borrowers are not thinking about the long-term consequences of the foreign exchange risk they're bearing, but are more interested in actually taking less expensive short-term loans in a hard currency. Another area of where donors can help is if they make hedging costs in some countries or for some sectors more affordable. We are working with the uh, European Commission and KFW on a pilot project to, uh, to support um, the hedging costs for the solar industry, which particularly in East Africa or in Sub-Saharan Africa is expanding very rapidly and which is a real uh, fantastic opportunity to bring uh, sustainable, clean energy to uh, households which have no access to energy now fast. Well, this is very much a, a collaborative learning experience. Um, I think the advantage today compared to a couple of years ago is that we see things emerging, that we are lessons learned coming up, that we have evidence uh, being grown. And that is really something we can now capitalize on. The big challenge is really to take this to scale. The existing uh, institutions like TCX, uh, like Garantco, they have proven that they are successful. It's a scalable model, so let's uh, strengthen those models to start with. As the workshop today shows, this is a huge um, agenda, uh, uh, local currency um, risks. And so we need a lot of innovations. Uh, the private sector window will be one of many innovations, but as often as we can, we'll try to partner with others so that the risks can be shared across many institutions. The new thing is, I believe, is really that we need to have the private sector very much at the center to this, because there's a widespread acknowledgement that the public sector, that the means of the public sector, even of the development finance institution, of the MDBs, are not sufficient to really make a difference. The meeting produced consensus on two critical issues. First, the need to transfer FX risk from vulnerable borrowers to those best able to manage the risk. Second, the need to scale up proven solutions for reducing FX risk. Please go to the Convergence website to find more information on the FX Risk and Development Workshop, including the workshop summary and an overview of best practice blended finance solutions to reduce FX risk.